hi friends uh, in this particular video i am giving you brief idea about uh, how to interface uh, 8086 with uh, external latches and trans receivers especially in minimum mode so here we will discuss about minimum mode operation of 8086 so in the introduction of 8086 i already explained 8086 operates in two modes minimum mode and maximum mode in minimum mode all control signals are generated by the processor only okay so with the help of those control signals processor will uh, uh, controls uh, uh, latches as well as trans receivers okay let us see how to analyze the minimum mode operation See the problem. Okay. Now let us see uh, this particular part. Uh, there is a clock generator. So this is very very essential. Role of clock generator is uh, it will give you three important. Uh, uh, pins information to 8086 in that one is ready see here ready okay one is ready then uh, other two are uh, clock then reset see here uh, the 8284 nothing but clock generator ic number is 8284 this 8284 is communicated to 8086 with the help of three pins reset pin clock pin and ready pin let us see so this is your 8284 now pin number 8 what is pin number 8 clock see here this is clock so the clock see here clock of 8284 is connected to processor clock okay so simply processor clock pin receiving a clock signal from the clock generator so this clock generator may generate uh, clock frequency of value 5 megahertz with the help of crystal oscillators here uh, this crystal oscillator the maximum frequency range is 15 megahertz so by adjusting the values of this crystal oscillator we get the 5 megahertz that 5 megahertz frequency signal is transmitting from this clock 8 to uh, clock of 8086 then other is a reset so here pin number 10 reset pin number 10 of 8284 nothing but clock generator is connected to reset of processor so i already mentioned uh, uh, this reset pin must be uh, activating for at least four machine cycles for every new operation during that time uh, except to code segment register all other uh, registers content is cleared flag register content is cleared okay except to code segment register all other uh, segment registers are cleared flag register cleared and code segment register is uh, fetching with the value uh, 4FH uh, and the next instruction is fetching from the address 4F0H. Like that, uh, uh, this reset instruction makes that particular thing automatically. Okay. So then other is, uh, uh, then other number is uh, 22, nothing but ready. In 8086, it is ready, whereas 5, 5 is also ready. So which three are very, very important? Ready pin, clock pin, then reset. These three are very, very essential and these three pins of 8284 is connected to processor. Okay, and the remaining pins are there X1, X2. They are these two connected to external crystal oscillator, power supply pin, clock synchronizing pin. Okay, uh, 8284 also there is one more ready one pin. Like that, uh, some pins are present, but as per uh, our minimum mode operation of 8086, only these three are essential. So, this uh, see clock, ready, and reset of 8284 connected to processor. So, now let us see uh, what is minimum mode. See here, uh, this is the minimum mode operation of 8086. Uh, so in that uh, there is a 8086 CPU. So here we have 40 pins. Then there is a clock generator. Number is 8284A. 8284A. Then uh, there is a latch. Number is 8282. Here we are taking three latches. One, two, three. Three latches. So that's why number is three. Here why I am indicating three means because of three latches. Okay. Then this is trans receiver. You know trans receiver uh, transmitting or receiving data. It is possible with the help of trans receiver. Here also we are taking two trans receivers. 
So why we are taking two transfer receivers? Because reason is we have uh, 16 bit data. So the size of 8086 processor data bus is 16 bit. Because of 16 data lines, we need uh, two transfer receivers. One, two. Two transfer receivers are required. So output of transfer receiver is uh, bidirectional data. Okay. Whereas address is uh, unidirection. Right. Now similarly, we have some control uh, pins related to transfer receiver and say related to uh, latch also. Okay. Let us see in detail. Okay, these are the pins that are present. So coming to first 8086. So we know in 8086 what happens? We have 40 pins which are required. I am indicating here. Now let us see first 8086 receiving uh, uh, three pins information from the clock generator. One is clock ready and reset in the last slide I explained. So these three signals are coming from the external clock generator. Okay, with a 5 megahertz clock frequency coming from the clock generator to clock ready also coming. Okay, then reset the signal also coming from the clock generator these three. So then coming to for selection of minimum mode the MN by MX bar signal must be high. High means VCC or if you connect one also. Then we are selecting which mode minimum mode. In minimum mode let uh, all control signals all control signals are coming from the processor. So uh, your latches, trans receivers all are controlled by processor only. Let us see in which way it is controlled. For example, uh, here uh, I have 20 multiplex, uh, actually 21 multiplexed lines are present in 8086. What are those first AD0 to AD50? So these 16 are multiplexed address and data lines. We are sending these multiplexed address and data lines to latch. Okay, so in latch there is a two important uh, controlling pins. One is OE bar. OE bar is output enable bar. It is connected to ground. Okay, then it is activating. Then other is STB, nothing but strobing pin. This strobing pin is connected to ALE. ALE. What is ALE? Address latch enable pin. And this pin must be high during T1 time. Nothing but first part of the machine cycle. So if you give ALE equal to 1 during T1 time and that information is given to STB. Accordingly, STB, actually this STB nothing but it's a combination of uh, 8 D flip flops point, common point. So each latch having 8 D flip flops. So all those latches, a common point is STB. That STB is now connected to ALE means automatically it will take uh, multiplex address and data lines, make it like a pure line. Like that one latch can separate uh, eight lines only. But here we have 16 uh, address and data lines, four address and status lines and one BHE bar slash S7. This is BHE bar S7. Uh, this is a, a 16 slash S3 to A19 slash S6. Like that 16 here, four here and one. Total five, total 60, uh, sorry, 16 plus four plus one, total 21. So 21 multiplex lines are present here. So in order to separate this, we are taking three latches. Okay. For that, we are activating STB with the help of ALE signal and OE bar is ground. Based on these three latches, what happens? We get uh, pure uh, address lines, nothing but A0 to A19 here. We get A0 to A19. Similarly, we have status lines also. S0 to, uh, sorry, S4, S5, S6, S7 are coming. Okay, similarly, BHE bar is also coming from the latch. They are separating. So after separating address lines into pure address lines, we get data lines. The, uh, those data lines are transmitted to trans receivers. Here, data lines are now moved to trans receiver. Because of 16-bit uh, data bus, I am taking two latches, uh, two trans receivers, sorry, two trans receivers. The role of trans receiver is uh, it can transmit 16-bit uh, data or receive 16-bit uh, data. Okay, so nothing but trans receiver act like a mediator between uh, 8086 and external device. Okay. Now for trans receiver also we have two pins. One is OE bar, nothing but output enable bar, then T. T is transmit. Okay, T is a one pin. Two pins are uh, must be activating. So OE bar is now connecting to DEN bar. So what is DEN bar in pin description? I explained. DEN bar is data enable bar. If this data enable bar is activating, then only data lines uh, are ready uh, for transmitting or receiving through trans receiver. So for that reason, DEN bar must be uh, enabled during T2 to T4 time. Okay, that information is given to OE bar, then OE bar is ready to transmit or receive data. Okay, then uh, uh, DT by R bar, this is also very important. DT by R bar is connected to T. For data transmitting, means processor sending data to external device, then DT by R bar should be 1. Okay, DT by R bar should be 1 if processor sending data uh, uh, to external device through trans receiver. For example, processor wants to receive data, then DT by R bar should be 0. Then uh, it will receive the data. So like the DT by R bar should be 1 or 0 depending on the transmission as well as receiving. Okay, accordingly a trans receiver uh, sending the data to external device or receiving data from the external device and passing to processor. Okay, and the other uh, signals that are present in the minimum mode is M by I O bar. Okay, whether we are selecting memory or I O decided by M by I O bar. Similarly, write bar, 
read bar, hold, HLDA. These two pins I already explained. These two pins are accessing the uh, process system bus by external peripheral. Okay, hold signal for requesting the pro uh, accessing process system bus. If processor is ready, it will send a hold acknowledgement signal. After sending hold acknowledgement signal, uh, then 8086 is uh, uh, giving permission to external peripheral uh, to take the, its a system bus. Then INTA bar and INT, uh, T, INTA bar and INTR. These two are also uh, requesting the processor uh, for executing its instruction. Okay, with the help of interrupt request and interrupt acknowledgement. If external device wants to execute its in, uh, wants to uh, execute uh, its instructions with the help of processor, then it will give information to interrupt request. If processor is ready, it will give you interrupt acknowledgement. After receiving interrupt acknowledgement, processor executing the external peripheral instructions. Like that, we have uh, signals that are present in the um, uh, a minimum mode of 8086. So finally, uh, the 8086 mainly uh, receiving three signals from the uh, external clock generator. One is clock ready and reset. Okay. Then uh, for minimum mode selection, M by, MN by MX bar should be connected to one R VCC. Okay. So now here we have 21 multiplexer lines are there in 8086, and those lines are separated into pure address lines, data lines, and status lines with the help of three latches, and each latch can separate only eight lines into pure address lines. But here we have 21. For that reason, we are taking three latches, and each latch having internally uh, a set of eight D flip flops, and all flip flops are connected to common point call it as STP, nothing but strobing point. This strobing point is connected to ALE. Whenever ALE is high, then automatically these lines are separating into a pure address and lines, address and data lines, and a similar address and uh, status lines, ECK. And here OE bar should be connected to ground. Similarly, trans receiver role is uh, transmitting or receiving data uh, between uh, 8086 and external device. And this trans receiver also having two signals, OE bar and T. OE bar should be connected to DEN bar and T is connected to DT by R bar. And these are the, some of the control signals. Okay. Like that, we can analyze the minimum mode operation of 8086 easily. Okay. Okay. So, thank you for watching uh, this particular video. If you really like, uh, please kindly uh, share my video to your friends and subscribe my channel. Thank you.